Okay, so now we're ready to put some music in and we're ready to put some titles in. Um, I'm going to leave music actually to the end because the title's going to uh, make this sequence a little longer. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use my arrow tool. Make sure you're on the arrow tool. Go to my sequence here and I'm just going to draw a box around all of that. And then I'm just going to push it forward. Maybe about five seconds and you can see that there's a little counter underneath that says how much you're advancing it. And I think my titles can go for five seconds. That's a good amount. So I'm trying to get as close to five seconds as possible. Um, 501 looks as fine. That's fine. Okay. So I've got a blank space now here, which is basically black on the video for five seconds before the video comes in with everything there. Okay. So I'm going to put the playhead at the beginning and I'm going to go up to the menu here and I'm going to go to file, new, title. Now you could do control T as well. It would do exactly the same thing. And when I do that, I get this box up here saying, what's the name of your title? So I'm going to call this beginning, just, or begin, just as the, my first title. None of these need to change. I'll press OK. And now my title window comes up in a second. There it is. OK, so I've got some guidelines here to give me an idea of where my sort of safe lines are. And I've got some options over here as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click in here with my text tool. Make sure the text tool is selected. And I'm going to click in here and I'm going to write um, logos in Illustrator. Uh, now, I really don't like that font. Um, so we're going to change that. I'm going to click on my arrow tool. And that will automatically put the box uh, around what I've just done. And I'm going to go over to here and I'm going to find a, a different font. Uh, something a bit blocky is what I'm looking for. So maybe something like that looks good. And I'm going to make it really big. Just for fun, I'm going to make it huge. So maybe like that. Move it over here. Really nice and big. Now, at this point, I decided I'd, I'd teach my kids something that they didn't know before. Something they could use in other programs as well. I thought I'd teach them about kerning. Now kerning, I'll put my mouse up here so you can see the word kerning. Kerning is the spacing between letters. And to show you how this works, I'm just going to use my type tool and just select, go inside here and select just the top two words, just that top line there. Now my kerning's at zero, which means I haven't made any changes. I'm going to click on that and hold down and drag to the right. And then you can see that the space between each letter increases or decreases as I like. What I'm trying to do here is I want it to be pretty much the same width as the bottom one to get that kind of effect. So I just thought I'd show the kids how to do that just for something different. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my arrow tool and now I've got my blocks. And um, I just wanted to point out there are some preset styles here that you can use. Um, for example, this one, or this one, or this one. I don't like any of those, so I'm just going to go to Edit Undo, and I'll go to Edit Undo, and I'll go one more, Edit Undo, so I'm back to where I was. Uh, I will change this, the, um, uh, the color, though. So we've got all these different options here that you could have fun with. I'm just going to click on this box here for the color, and I want to use a nice yellow for this. So something where's my yellow something like that for example yep press ok now it's in the color now it's important to see it's black in the background and that's because it's black where my playhead is if I move my playhead over here then you would see it on top of the video okay but my playhead is at the beginning so it's black now there is no save button to this I just have to close that and then if I go to my project files over here, I can see there's my new file, my new title, and I'm going to drag that in. And I'm going to drag it into my V2 track there. And it automatically gives it five seconds because that's um, the block, that's the space between the beginning where my playhead is and my first clip. So here it is, nice and big, very nice, and then it cuts to there. Now, of course, if it's longer than that, I'm just going to stretch it a bit. If it's longer than that, it's going to go on the video, which is not what I want. So if, you, if that happens to you, you can just put your mouse over the edge of the block there until it turns into that symbol and then just drag it and wait for it to clip. So then it just, just marks it there at exactly the right spot. There we go. So great, I've got my title. Now I'm ready for my music. Now, here's a little tip. So I'm going to click on the browser 
and I've already got this marked off. This is youtube.com slash audio library slash music. And this is a wonderful resource for finding royalty free, uh, cost free um, music that you can put onto projects, also sound effects as well. But we're looking at the music right now. Um, and you can see that some of these are marked Creative Commons and some of them aren't. So there are some um, uh, additional labels onto these as well. But what you can just do is just play a clip and see what it sounds like. So I'll play uh, maybe this one. Bit boring for what I'm doing, so I'll press pause. Uh, and I could go down and find a whole bunch of things, but you can filter it. For example, genre. I want something that's cinematic, so I'm going to press cinematic over here. And now it's going to filter all the cinematic stuff. And actually, I want something dramatic. So I'm going to click on mood and go to dramatic and then see what comes up. Okay, that looks good. These are all dramatic things. Um, let's try uh, let's try hero theme. No, don't like that. Let's try this one. Nope. Uh, we're gonna keep on eighties cop show. What does that sound like? Too slow. All right, maybe dramatic isn't what I'm going for. What about bright? Let's try bright and see what comes up. You know, I'm thinking cinematic's not the right spot, so I'm going to try pop. I just want something fun, something that will be quick. I actually think that's awful. Okay, one more try. Okay, that's fine. We'll just say that that's the one that we're going to use. I'm going to click on the download button and that will download it to my download folder. So I'll wait for that to go through. jump into Premiere and I'm going to double click in here in my project uh, window over here just in an empty space and this time I need to go to my downloads folder and there's the track that I just downloaded lucky day double click on that there it is and I am going to drag that into my sequence and I'm going to put it here in my audio one track here and there's the song now actually it looks like it, it starts at that point so I'm actually going to use my razor tool here and I'm just going to trim it right there because I don't need some empty space uh, use my arrow tool now to click that block and delete it okay so now I'm just going to move that across and it obviously goes for way too long so I'm just going to zoom out using the slider here and I'm just going to trim that right all the way down maybe just a little bit more than the track so let's have a listen Okay, there's a couple of things I want to do. I want to fade to black, the video, and I also want the audio to fade. So let's go to my effects, and inside the effects, I'm actually going to ignore all this here. I'm just going to search for an effect by clicking in the search box, and I'm going to type in DIP for dip, and dip to black is basically fade to back, black. So I'm going to bring that all the way over to the end of my clip here, so that as I move it across, you can see, that's good. And now I'm going to look, whoops, now I'm going to do another search and I'm going to type fade. So I want to fade out. And the one I'm looking for, I'm going to go down in my audio transitions is this one, constant power. It's actually highlighted in blue because it's a popular one. And I'm going to drag that to the end of my audio clip like that. Now, 
That's a small fade actually. I actually want it to start the sound to start fading as the video starts fading. So I'm just going to zoom in there quite a bit, move along. And as I put my mouse over that yellow effect block there, you can see it turns into that symbol. I can click and drag that so that's nice. That lengthens it. I'm trying to lengthen it to about the same size. Okay, so if I start from here, let's see if it worked. Good. All right, so there's my whole thing. Let's just see the whole sequence. Okay, so it looks like it ends up going for about 26 seconds, the whole thing. Okay, now, as I said, you could be technical about this. You could add a lot of finesse to this to make sure the music goes where the, you want the clip to go and how long the clips go for and where the transitions go and how long the transitions go for. But um, I just wanted to show you just the basics of setting up something like this. Okay, so the last step is, first of all, I'm going to save my project file. Always a good thing to uh, do. And then I'm going to go to File, Export, Media, which is basically Control-M. I tell my kids, just think the last thing you want to do is make a movie. Control-M, M for movie. So I'll click on that. And what we're going to do is this whole project is now going to encode as a movie. So um, what I usually use in the classroom is I make sure the format is H.264, that's fine. That's going to save it as an MP4 file and it's going to be not too big. And here under preset, I get them to click that and go all the way to the bottom. You have to click and hold that little arrow all the way to the bottom. And a good one to use is this one here, YouTube 1080p. Even if you're not going to put it on YouTube, it ends up being good quality and a good sized file. So we click on that. So I've got my preset set. I've, ch I've checked the formats, what I want it. The last thing is I need to make sure it's called what I want it to be called and it's in the folder that I want it to go into. So I'm going to click in, uh, click this blue thing here, which is the name of the file, click on that and I'm going to go to my video folder and I'm just going to call this logos trailer and press save. So now you can see here, you can see my um, video path here and that's what it's called and everything looks good. So now it's just a matter of pressing export and letting the magic happen. So really, that is how you make a trailer in Adobe Premiere. And again, add your finesse, add your skill, take your time. Um, but if you just wanted to see the basics of how to do it, I hope these two videos helped you. So thank you and I'll see you again next time.